To create a larger than map project, I'll open the Cricut Design Space program and from the landing page, select the hamburger menu. In the drop down, click Canvas. To add an image to the canvas, I'll click Image from the Tools panel. And if you have any linked cartridges, this is how you can find them. From the top, click Category, and mine currently says All Images. Next, select Image Sets. Because it's a purchased cartridge, I click Purchase and type Mickey and Friends into the search engine. Once it comes up, click the folder and search for the image to insert. Select it and add it to the canvas. This pre-designed, cut-ready image appears on the canvas already split up in multiple layers. This file has two offsets that I don't need. I'll select both the offset layers and click Delete. Select the design to enlarge it, and because my screen is minimized, I need to click More to see the height and width. I'll set my height to 48 inches, and from the bottom, I'll click Zoom Out to see my entire design. An exclamation point is a warning that something is not right with the layer. Click the exclamation for an error description. Not supported because it's too large. Assuming you have a 12 by 20 format, it cannot cut larger than 11.5 by 23.5. We know it's too large and we'll take care of that soon. Next, I'll select more and then change the position of this image. I'm setting it at zero, zero. So it's right up against the corner at the top of both my X and Y axis. I'll duplicate the entire design and again, I'll set the position of that design at zero, zero. I'm left with two entire sets and both are positioned in the same spot. From one image set, I'll select a black Mickey Mouse base. Under operation, change the color to gray. This will make the next step a little bit more visible. Now I'll select all the colored layers on that same image set and change the operation from basic cut to score lines. The purpose is to score the outline into the black base layer so we know exactly where to glue each colored piece during assembly. I'll collapse the score set by hitting the arrow. Now moving on to the colored layers, because I already created my black base in the previous layer, I'm going to delete the black layer from this set. Now I'll take that entire layer and I'll drag it to the top and arrange it so that it appears on top of the black base. Again, we have an exclamation point. Now this tells us at a high level that something in this group is too large, but it doesn't specify which layer it's referring to. If I click ungroup, I'll see that three of my five layers have exclamation points. So those are the three that I need to focus on. I'll start with the white pieces and clicking on contour will give me a visual of what this layer is made up of. I can see I have the eyes in one section, the left hand in the button, and then the right hand. So I can split this up into three individual layers. To isolate each section, I'll slice it by using a free circle. Duplicate the circle and then arrange both circles to cover two of the white sections completely. Simultaneously select one circle and then the white layer and click slice. This will result in three pieces, leaving your original white piece and two black pieces. Select the two black pieces and delete. Repeat the process by selecting the next circle and the white layer and then hit slice. Again, select the two black pieces and click delete. Now that I've sliced each section, I'm left with three different pieces of white, and none of these layers have an exclamation point indicating they're too large, so they're good to go. Next, I'll work on the yellow layer. Repeat the slice process with the shape. This time, I'll insert an oval. Stretch it and size and arrange the oval so that it completely covers one of the shoes. Selecting both the oval and the shoes, click Slice. Again, Select and delete the extra black pieces. This results in two individual shoes, but one of the shoes has an exclamation point, so this means it's too big. Hovering over the corner of the square of a selected image makes the rotation handles appear. Sometimes rotating an object would make it fit the size requirements. Once it's rotated, the exclamation point disappears 
So now I know this layer is also ready without additional slicing needed. The last layer to be sliced is the face. I don't want to have seams running right through his face, so I'll try to make them purposeful. Insert a circle or an oval. Then I'll size it and arrange it following the contour of the eyes and the cheek, and I'll try to separate those two pieces. Selecting the oval and the face, I'll hit slice. Again, select the two black layers and hit delete. Now I'm left with two face pieces and neither of them have exclamation points, so those two are ready. The colored layers are now complete. Select all of them and click group. Collapse the group with the arrow and then hide it by clicking the eyeball. Now looking at the base layer, select all of the score layers and from the combine options, select weld. This leaves me with one solid welded outline, which is a score, and one solid base outline, which is a cut. Next, I'll insert a square from the free shapes. I'll change the color to blue and change the size to 10.75 by 23.5. Last, I'll change its position to 0, 0. This way, it's right up at the corner of my X and Y axis. Because this image starts at zero and is 10.75 inches in wide, that means the next square needs to start at 10.75. My Y axis stays at zero so that it's flush against the top. If I select both of my rectangles, I can see that my width is 21.5. So that means that my third square needs to sit at 21.5 and my y-axis again is gonna stay at zero. Select all three rectangles and hit duplicate. This time my y-axis is going to be 23.5 because that's the length of my top row and my x-axis is going to be zero so it sits flush right up against the edge. I'll select all of my squares and then hit group. Now it's very important that these are lined up flush against each other or also have gaps in your design and you'll see that your images tend not to line up 100%. Next, I'll select a group of squares, duplicate it, and then change the color and the position to sit 0, 0 so it's directly on top of both my image sets and the other group of squares. Again, it's very important that these two sets are aligned because we're going to have a score base and a cut base. We want them to line up when we cut them out from each other. I'll arrange them so that my score layer sits on top of one set of rectangles and my base layer sits on top of another set of rectangles. This design has cut lines in the base and because I'm cutting it into pieces, I don't want them to damage the integrity of the project. So to hide the cut lines, I'll click on contour and then click hide all. This is going to hide all those bits and pieces. Now there is a hollow in the arm and I don't want to hide that part. So if I click it from the panels, I can select it so that it shows. When I exit the contour menu, I'll have my base and that hollow part still in the arm. So this is where the larger than mat magic happens. The idea is to cut up the design into smaller puzzle-like pieces that will fit the mat. So start the slicing process by selecting one square and the base layer and clicking slice. Select the two colored slice pieces and hit delete. Select the next square and your base and hit slice. Select both colored pieces and hit delete. Repeat the process until your base does not have any exclamation warnings. Selecting a square and your base and slice, then deleting the extra pieces. Remember, slice can only be applied to two objects at a time. So repeat this process with as many squares as needed to cut up your design. Repeating shape, base, slice, deleting the excess. Select both of your pieces, slice, 
delete the extra black pieces. The last piece has an exclamation point. Looking at its contour, I can see what it's made up of. And these two little pieces, I'll hide one piece, close the contour menu, and then duplicate that layer. Go back to the contour menu and hide the shoe part and this time reveal the tail part. And now I have those two little pieces. I could have also achieved this by slicing like I did earlier. With no exclamation points on the black layers, the black layers are now ready. Finally, select all those black layers, group them together, hide and collapse it, just so that this next step is a little bit easier to see. I'll repeat that slicing process on the score base. I call this process S squared, which is score and slice. This step is optional, but it helps with exact positioning during assembly. So once again, I'll select both of my pieces and hit slice, and then delete the colored excess. Again, you have a square and your score base and hit slice. Delete your excess colored pieces. Select both pieces, slice, delete the extra. Both pieces, slice, delete the extra. Repeat this to all the squares. My final piece is too large. Hitting the contour again, isolate the parts as needed. I don't have any more exclamation points on the score layer, so all of those are good to go. The last step is attaching the score piece with each corresponding base piece. Select the shoe base and the score lines that will score on that base, then click attach. This will result in having attached sections with just two pieces. I'll repeat this process for each corresponding piece by selecting both and clicking attach, selecting both and clicking attach. All of my base and score pieces are now attached to its own corresponding layer. I'll unhide all of my colored layers, and then the larger than matte design is now ready, so I'll send it to the mat by clicking Make It. On the Make It screen, you can review all of your layers and arrange them as needed. All of the black layers indicate it will score and cut the outline. That's going to help us with the exact positioning during assembly of the colored layers. Follow the on-screen instructions and cut out each layer. I'm using poster board, so I set my materials to heavy cardstock with added pressure. I won't go through the attack. So here's how to assemble the Mickey Mouse larger than math designs. I'm starting with poster board from Dollar Tree, which I'll score down the middle, lay up against my table, and then rip them in half. This gives me two 11 by 28 sheets of paper. My cuts are 10 and three quarter inch wide, so that's just enough wiggle room so that I don't have to worry about those edges being so clean. I'll also use 11 by 14 poster board and 65 pound cardstock. I'll start by cutting my black base layers, which are going to score my outline and then cut my base pieces. I'll line them up and then tape them from the back using masking tape. I'm not worried about it being so clean. From the front, you can see all the score lines, which help tell me exactly where to position my pieces and tape them on, knowing they're gonna be secure and in the right place. All of these are cut out using the heavy cardstock with added pressure setting on my Cricut machine. Once I assemble them, I use double-sided tape from the back to secure them in place. You can use whatever your preferred method is for adhering cardstock together. That's all I have for you today, so if this was helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.